We're going to talk about one of the greatest finishers of all the times. We're we're talking. I mean, not just know, sometimes. No, all the times. <laughs> all the time. That that that's a, a Santino Morella. All the times. Yeah, yeah. I had to take we that. We got all the times. <laughs> you got to be all the time. Yeah. My name is Santino Morella. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I, I had to uh, steal I, from him. All the times. All the times. <laughs> so you know, there's the there's the sharpshooter. There's the Canadian destroyer. Uh-huh. There's the pile driver. There's the tombstone Man. pile driver. There is uh, the. Five star frog splash. Mm. There is uh, the I can only uh, wish. elbow from the top rope, cursing of Macho Man Randy Savage. And then, ladies Dig and it. gentlemen, Dig it. we're talking about one of the greatest finishers uh. this side of the Euphrates River. We're talking about the one, the only, the stink face, <laughs> ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big uh. Keish, first of all, who came up with the stink face finisher? Oh man, I, I don't know. It had to is it, it had to uh, till this day. I'm still looking for this young uh, old lady. Sounds like an old lady's voice. In Mobile, Alabama. It was a house show mm-hmm. Sunday. It's a house show against me and the boss man. Oh, Ray Trailer. Brother Ray Trailer. That's my man. He was a good dude, man. Love Cobb um, County, Georgia. Big but, boss, man. Come on now. And so they, me and him, they married us to, you know, around the circuit for a bit. Mm-hmm. I was happy. You know, anytime they bring in some new talent or character, they're building that, number one, you get to get out early, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so me and Trailer, we'd open up the show, man, and we'd get out there. And, you know, we, Ray can go. You know what I mean? And when he throws them damn clothesline and them boots to the head, mm-hmm. you're definitely going to feel it, right? And so we would have our normal match, man. And, you know, one time I gave him a clothesline. Mm-hmm. And when I gave him a clothesline, you know, the who's kind of took a bump over there to the corner, but they didn't go down, right? So he just kind of just stumbled backwards and landed in the back turnbuckle with his back there. And, of course, this is the normal stink face, which we all know it today. Mm-hmm. I'm looking the opposite way. Uh-huh. And, and all of a sudden, no, I didn't even turn yet. All of a sudden, I heard thump. <laughs> when I heard that thump, mm-hmm. and I haven't turned yet. And uh, you can hear the crowd were just roaring. I, I said, what the hell are they roaring for? I, I clotheslined him a while back. And all I can hear was an old voice is, Rikishi! <laughs> Rikishi! Rikishi! Turn around and stick your butt in his face! And I tell you, Joey, mm-hmm. that's where this, like, I'm actually turning around, right? But I'm trying to find out who's yelling that. Mm-hmm. Until this day, I, I don't know who did it, right? But I can hear it around, around the front row, man, and this is where I turned. As I turn, now I'm looking at... Say you're boss man and you're on your butt uh-huh. and I'm looking at you mm-hmm. and then I go to take a step. As soon as I go to take a step, I can hear like the fans. It's like a volcano start ready to erupt. Wow. Is that what, who, what we call a pop? Mm-hmm. I go to take another step. And now it's getting louder and louder. Take another step and it's getting louder. And I said, okay, I know every time I take a step, It's getting loud. But what if I just play with him and just slow down a little bit? And that's where the slow stepping took another step. Boom. Now, keep in mind, I had no idea what the hell I'm going to do because I only got so many steps to get to him. Mm -hmm. So finally I get there. The crowd's just erupted, you know, but I'm facing towards him. All right? And then, you know... He says to me, he looks at me, he says, We got him now, baby. <laughs> Turn around and stick your butt in my face. That's Big Boss Man? Big Boss Man. <laughs> I said, I'm looking, I said, damn, now keep in mind, we've been going like, you know, 15 something minutes, baby oil, my hair is wet, you know, you know, leaking down the crack of my ass on my thumb <laughs> and stuff, you know what I mean? So I go to turn around, man, and I turn around, you can hear the pop, boy. A people erupted, right? And you, you just hear, give it to me, baby. We got him now. Give it to me, baby. And I just looked at him. I said, okay. Boom. Man, I gave him the stink face. There was nothing else to do after that. I mean, no matter what spot we did after that, 
you couldn't get it as loud as a stink face. Boom, those fade out. Kishi Savat kick him. He land, dropped it, dropped the bonsai one, two, two three. three. And we went home after because there was nothing else to do. But that day, you know, in WWE, when you do these house shows, they got these agents and so forth, you know what I mean? And they'll have guys like, you know, uh, Dean Malenko, you know, uh, uh, other cats like, you know, uh, Tony Guerrilla, Jack Lanza. These are all old school cats, man, are good, good people, you know. And uh, they would give a report back to the office which match was good, which match they should, you know, put on Monday Night Raw and blah, blah, blah. So come Monday, I'm coming to TV. I never knew if I was going to, you know, be booked. Uh, but I knew it was going to be some type of enhancement match working against, you know, an uh, enhancement guy uh, and so forth. But they got back, dude, and they said, we want you to do that move out there. Now, this is crossing into... Attitude there, right? Okay. It's crossing in now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Cause that's basically where when the Rikishi character kind of stumbled in there. Anyhow, boom, we did that. Thank you, uh, Drink Master. So the first recipient of the stink face is Big Boss Man? Big Boss Man. Wow. Yeah. And wow. then after that, dude, when I debuted on Monday Night Raw, so they go by ratings and stuff like that. You know what I mean? They're monetizing all that. Right. You know, we all understand what that works like, you know, Higher ratings, you know, higher money, blah, blah, blah. So, you, and also the merchandise. So everything just start, you know, the wheel just start turning fast for me. Before you know it, I had, you know, T-shirts out, merchandise, yellow glasses, you know what I mean? All kind of Rikishi commercials and stuff, you know. So, uh, you know, I was on to something. After, what, five or six characters, you know, finally, you know, it felt good. Like, finally stuck with it long enough to really... You know, be able to, you know, have something that people can bite to, you know. So but before, uh, so WWE basically said, we want this every night. Like, this is your new finish. They, they, did they tell you, or is pretty much common knowledge, this worked, I'm going to do this every night? Or did they well, tell you? Well, for common knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody tells me what I'm going to do as far as, uh, you know, when I'm working my character. Sir. Sure. Right. For me, like, you know, we all know, like, no talent goes out there and not pulls out the stuff that people pop to. You're an idiot if you if you don't think that way. Mm -hmm. You, know, you got to go out there and you find, like, you know, you know, consecutive uh, signature moves. Like mine's, I threw in the stink face, threw in the bonsai drop, you know, I threw in the savat kick, the 360 at 450 pounds. <laughs> you know, all these signature moves, you know, the headbutt. I wanted to change it, you know, for years, you know, our uncles at the head, but we're always known for, you know, hard heads, you know. But, you know, and then my brother came in and, you know, revamped the Samoan, uh, the Samoan drop, you know, where you launch the guy to the air. And, and so I always want to, you know, out of my family, I tell each and every one of them that trained with me and up underneath me, hey, listen, you're going to be recognized as one of the family members. But picture this, when you see all of us on the poster, you want to be able to be be able to be noticeable, like stand up. We can only have so many long, you know, long, wet hair, you know, like, ah, like that, that look, right? You, you got to, so I'm the first bleach blonde hair in the crew. Yes. You know what I mean? So mm. I figured it out. It took me the hell of characters to figure it out, but the one thing is I never quit. Mm -mm. I never quit because I knew I was worthy. I knew it was just finding the right character that fit fit me, and Kishi was was it. There's not too much that's off from how I really am with that character. Were you able to get used to that finish uh, real quick? Because you knew that was money. You knew, uh, like you said, the merchandise, cha-ching, cha-ching, yeah. you see the signs. So did you accept that as your new finisher right away? Because I, I know you, Big Keish, you're from the streets. Yeah. That finisher is probably, you didn't probably start wrestling thinking you were going to end up sticking your ass in people's faces. Uh, I was already twerking before twerking was famous. <laughs> what you talking about? You and, know? And, and you know what? I have TMZ actually did compare your ass to Kim Kardashian's, by the way. Yeah. So 
We all we all know. Uh, I mean, oh my big booty freaks out there. <laughs> yeah. You know, Jeez, I would Louise. love to see a video with all of us out there together. You know, it's just it's it's one of those one of those uh, photo type of things or video type of things. Something fun for the people. Yeah, you know, what I mean, because now they're using celebrities in you know WrestleMania. They're mm. using celebrities in our pay per views and stuff. So why not? Right, right. Why not give something to the people that you know what I mean that. They never seen before. Borderline. Not enough big bo- big booty pictures out there. Nah, we definitely need it. Nah, um, I, I, I remember last time I didn't even know who this chick Lizzo was, and I heard that you know somebody a friend of mine. Please, said, man, uh, I mean, did you go to the Lakers game? I said, hell no, I didn't go to the Lakers game. And she if was I did, I would have been up in the box. But they said, well, this girl here was dressed like you. Her name is Lizzo. <laughs> dressed like you? Yeah, I had no idea who, who was Lizzo. <laughs> and they sent, me the, they sent me the picture. Who said that? Who they compared me, you to Lizzo? That's dude, there was a up. picture that went trending that it shows Lizzo's butt. The, her outfit is like she had my wrestling gear on. Right and hey, hey, big shout out to Lizzo if you're listening. Hey yo, I love yeah. you, girl. No, Thank for you for yeah. representing Big Keith. But yeah, I don't even know if she knew there was a a, a a thong wrestler out there. No, I don't think she knew I was out there wearing that type of wrestling gear. You know? Oh my goodness! But yeah, man, I would love to just show up. Just uh, you know, listen, listen, listen. You know, um, <clears throat> you've done a lot of stink faces. Yeah. Um, were there any stink faces? given to somebody you didn't like and so let's say let's say you know what you knew ahead of time you have this guy you maybe didn't feel the best about Mm -hmm. so maybe you ate a little extra spicy foods i got you you. maybe you didn't shower up all that great in certain proportions you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and you know what i need to talk just to talk about you know how you run into friends sometime accidentally on this business right Mm -hmm. and he truly let me know that he was definitely one of my good friends. How's that? Because for him to say, stick your ass in my face, and never has been done before, <sighs> I, didn't know how to, I, didn't, I didn't know how to sit on his face. I really didn't, right? But then I knew, like, you know, once because I'm wide. So once I figured out, when I sat back, it's like I'm sitting on a second turnbuckle. Mm. So then I start, you know, seeing from the, re, uh, the repeat... Uh, finish right of mm. uh, the footage when i see it back you know i'm watching it back i can see some of them when i go to see them they cheat up underneath that second turnbuckle because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they don't want your ass to get on their yeah, face yeah yeah hi yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I, I i love just hearing you talk about big boss man uh he's one of my all-time favorites yeah. um but uh i i had asked you before uh we had technical uh difficulties was there ever a time that you gave a loaded stink face. And what I mean by loaded, I mean yeah. like, you know, maybe you didn't shower enough or maybe you ate something a little spicy. You know, maybe mm-hmm. you, you, you know, you let a few rip before the match. You know what I mean? <laughs> Was there anybody who ever received a loaded stink face? Well, you, well, you know what? I'll tell you what. Yes, sir. As far as name-wise, no. You know, I, I the stink face was the stink face. You know, mainly me trying to protect them because of my weight. I keep in mind, like I said earlier, I, I never tried this move, nor do I know how I'm going to break the fall on these guys, right? As you, you do want to be safe, right? So, you don't yeah. want a big 450-pound guy break their neck. sitting on somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, I mean, this is the part where you know, people think it's funny when they watch it, mm-hmm. but there's skills to this, man. You got to have, you got to be having skills. You got to know how to shake you, your tail feather. W- when you back up a little bit, you know, you got to back up, arch a little bit. You know, and then you kind of find your way. This is when the swerve go back and forth, left and right, mm-hmm. just to find that hot spot. Right when it's there, bam! And then there's a, it's a science. I to was it. twerking before twerking got famous. Yes, you know, yes. Stink you face. working before and twerking so, was a thing. That's right. And I tell you what, you know, what's that? So all the my enhancement matches, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I brought it to these guys, right? Because. Mm-hmm. You're still, you know, wanting to get over, right? Because that's mm-hmm. what you put out there, and that's what they're put out there for you. Mm-hmm. And so you just try to do your best. But, but, you know, coming from where we train mm-hmm. with our uncles, and, you know, we, we train to be uh, very safe out there with whoever we're wrestling. All right? So the sting phase was easy with these guys here with the enhancement because it helped me find my way. Mm. You know, the pressure and, you know, how 
much weight to put on them and blah, blah, yes, blah. Sir. And so that was that. And, you know, <laughs> so out of the names, to go back to the names, mm -hmm. I'd have to say Brooklyn Brawler. Steve Lombardi? <laughs> Steve Lombardi. You wow, know what I mean? who, who we talked about on the he last was always episode. Like, yeah, he was always like, sometimes like, you know, he talked to us like he's close to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he was a real good friend of Pat Patterson back in the Thank day. Thank you, Drink Master. He was yeah. a real good friend of uh, Pat, Pat Patterson. Yeah, he's a real good friend like of Pat. A real Pat. good friend. I don't know what type of friend. I never was in their business, but... You know, yeah, you you hear you hear things. Their stories are out there. They're out there. Do I, do I, do there. I give a shit? They're you know out what there. I mean? But we don't care. Yeah, when I got a chance to work, I just you know, I just hated you know, I hated people that were even affiliated with being like stooges. It could be Steve Lombardi. It could be somebody else that you know that that was in the office and so, so he forth. caught a loaded stink face. I gave him my, you know, I got three pair of trunks. Mm -hmm. You know, I got the one that never comes out the Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. I got the one that was semi-washed, meaning when I say semi-washed, it was worn the night before but hung over the AC in the hotel room. Right. And then you mm -hmm. got, I got hella ones that are nice, <laughs> brand new. Those are the ones that I wear when I'm working against top, top talent or people that I don't, you know, I really didn't give who I was giving the stink face because right. the fact of the matter is is like when I came down you know came coming back to this new character uh -huh. and I walked through the you know wrestlers man their trip you know what I mean you know they'll 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 want to say something but if it's towards a person that they know they can't they can't be dealt with they're gonna keep it to themselves and kind of just you know backdoor you meaning talk to somebody else about it right instead of having the balls to come sit. But, so when I'm walking down the aisle, you know, a lot of people standing around and going through this shit, but I'm walking down with that new thong on. And, and you know, I can feel people talking shit. Mm -hmm. I can feel it. And it got, you know, when I'm walking by, you know, I walk by, I can see Big Show. I can see other guys like, uh, who else? Uh, uh, Kamala, the, uh, you know. Uh, the Ugandan Luke. giant was talking shit. No, 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 I'm just saying. I can feel certain people. I didn't say that they was talking shit. Oh. I'm naming the names. Oh, yes, sir. Let's clarify this. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. And so, you know, Steve Lombardi was there. Uh, you know, he was one of the guys there, Pat Patterson. So they were sitting there talking. And I just got, you know, you know I could tell when people start talking shit, you almost feel your ass start getting hot. Right? And then I can hear people, <laughs> mm. <laughs> boy, look at that. And so in my mind, the first TV I came out, that put a stamp in my brain, Joey, mm -hmm. and meaning that every motherfucker that I'm working with, you can rest assured, if I knew or had any doubt that you was the one that was talking behind my back with this new character, you can rest assured your ass going to get that, that third thong. <laughs> Steve Lombardi got the third thong. Pat wow. Patterson got the third thong. As his back came out and he had the he gave me the stink face, but it looked like he had, like, shit stains on there. Ooh. All right, rest, rest in peace. But, you know, he was a mind a genius, mm -hmm. but never really, you know, and I can say this because we didn't have that relationship. Okay. Wish I would. I never did anything to this man and so forth. But, hey, I guess when you have your favorites, you got your favorites, man. Right. I'm just not the one, man. I, I, I earns my respect. So you and Pat Patterson... Didn't really get along. I, I just, we didn't, not that we didn't get along. We wasn't buddy buddies like he is. With Brawler. To different talents yeah, yeah. and stuff. And no, okay. hey, it is what it is, man. But it didn't stop Big Keith from moving forward. Yes, sir. Because at the end of the day, I laughed all the way to the bank. Right. Mm -hmm. You dig? Hot doggy. Yeah, y'all going to learn something from me today, man. Y'all wrestlers, you going to learn something.